Hello, all my live stream fanatics. This is your man, Dr. Usher, coming at you live with another live stream word of encouragement. That's right, another live stream word of encouragement. Well, today I want to educate you on how to guard your spirit from being contaminated with the trash that will kill your energy, steal your joy, and destroy your motivation. Let me repeat that. I'm going to teach you how to guard your spirit from being contaminated with trash that will kill your energy, steal your joy, and destroy your motivation. So get your pen and paper, as I always say, and let's jump right in. Now, did you know that there are four gateways that a woman has by which her spirit can be contaminated? Did you also know that men only have three gateways? Yep. It's true. So let's define what a gateway is. A gateway is a portal by which an external entity can have direct access to someone's spirit, thus impacting their mind, will, and emotions. So what are these gateways? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's open up our Bible to Psalms 141 and let's look at the verses, I guess, uh, let's look at verses three through four, okay? And let's see if you can guess what the first gateway is. And it reads, verse 3, Set a guard over my mouth, O Lord. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Do not let my heart be drawn to what is evil, so that I take part in wicked deeds along with those who are evildoers. Do not let me eat their delicacies. That was in the Bible. Now, the Bible here is giving us insight on the primary tool that is used to contaminate our spirit with trash. Now, can you guess what it is? That's right, it's our mouth. The primary tool that the enemy will use to contaminate us is the words that we allow to spew out of our mouths and onto others. See, what I need you to understand is that the mouth is a very versatile tool. It is the only gateway that can send and receive stimuli that can impact our spirit while at the same time is impacting the spirit of another person. For example, have you ever heard someone call you a bad name or make a derogatory comment about you? How did it make you feel? See, those words went straight into your spirit. Now let's take this a step further. Have you ever had a negative thought come into your head? Let's say that thought said, I'm stupid, or I can't do this, I might as well quit. And you actually mumbled those words under your breath. Do you know what happened when you mumbled those words? Not only did it contaminate the spirit of those that heard it around you, but it also recontaminated your own spirit because you put that junk into your ears, into your head. And that kind of leads into the next gateway on my list. Can you guess what it is? <laughs> well. The next gateway is our ears, okay? So, we have to learn to be careful with the words that we listen to and the words that we allow to come out of our mouth. This includes songs, poetry, news, and any content that's delivered through words. See, the Bible says in Romans 10, 17, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So it's logical to believe that if faith can come by hearing, then also fear, doubt, worry, unbelief, and any negative, any negative emotion can come by hearing as well. For example, good example, how many of you will admit that you've had days when you felt perfectly fine, but then someone told you some bad news? For example, someone around you got COVID and you start worrying that you got COVID and you start to feel sick. I know it happened to me. <laughs> One of my friends got COVID. I was hanging around that friend and I'm thinking, man, I got COVID. Next thing you know, I'm starting to feel sick. See, words have direct impact on our spirit and emotional health. This is why we must be careful with what we listen to. The dangerous thing about our ears, listen up. The dangerous thing about our ears is that it's the only gateway that we cannot shut off. Our ears are always on. They are always on on when we're awake when we're asleep they're always engaged in hearing that's what ears do this is why you must protect what goes in them at all times 
Be careful with what you listen to. Okay? All right. The third gateway I want to talk to you about is your eyes. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 22 through, I guess it's chapter 6, verses 22 through 23, that the lamp of the body is the eye. These things right here, people. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light of the eye, the light that's in your eye is darkness, how great that darkness will be. This means... That whatever you see will not only impact your spirit, but it will also impact your physical body. Have you ever looked at something that made you sick to your stomach? Like, I, that's why I don't watch horror shows, because I look at that stuff and it makes me want to puke. Or have you ever looked at something that aroused your passions inside? I won't go into details, <laughs> but we've all been there. Oh, no, she looked good. You know, I mean, let's be real. That's what we've all done. Well, what you look at can impact the emotions you feel. If you look at good things, then your spirit and body will be full of light. Light is a metaphor for good. But if you look at bad things, your spirit and body will be full of darkness. Darkness is a metaphor for bad. So here's the important thing about the eyes. I really got, come on guys, I pay attention. I need y'all to get this. Here's the most important thing I need y'all to understand about the eyes. You cannot learn how to do anything unless you see it first. Every sin, every good deed is learned by seeing it first. That is why we have to be careful with what we watch and what we read. It will impact us negatively or positively. It all depends upon the content of the media that you are viewing or that I'm viewing or that we all are viewing. And the last gateway, this is the part that <laughs> it's about to get real. The last gateway is strictly for women. Because remember I told y'all in the beginning, there are four, women have four gateways, men only have three. So men, you can tune out right now because y'all don't really need to, to listen to this part because it's only for ladies. Okay, y'all ready? <laughs> ladies, the next, get, the next gateway that I'm gonna mention is tied to your mental, emotional, spiritual and physical well-being it is the one gateway that if you don't guard it properly it has the power to destroy you and your offspring are you ready to know what it is kids you might want to go to another room because we about to talk some grown folk stuff right now so <laughs> parents you may not want your kids to watch i'm not going to use any profanity so don't worry about it but i'm just saying we're going to we're going to get down to the nitty-gritty for a moment the next gateway is the female private part. If you don't know what the private part is, inbox me and I'll just text a word to you. But I'm trying to keep this like PG or even G rated so we can, if the kids did stick around and hear it, you don't have to worry about me saying anything inappropriate because I'm not. But again, the next gateway, to, the fourth gateway, the final gateway that I'm going to talk about today is the female private part. The Bible says that the female private part is the only gateway or the only part that two or more spiritual, separate spiritual beings can be united into one single spiritual being. Did you get that? The female private part is the only way two or more spiritual beings, two or more separate spiritual beings can be united into one spiritual being. That's pretty deep. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 15 through 17, it says this. Do you not know that he who is joined with a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. This means that only a woman can unite other spiritual beings. That's deep. That's the power of a woman. And here, here's the caveat, women. This is one thing I need y'all to get. Here's the caveat. A woman can spiritually join with multiple partners. This means that every man you had intercourse with is still a part of you. This is the reason why some of you are confused about what you want in a man. Because you've joined spiritually with so many men that you've picked out the good things 
of those partners and you've made a Frankenstein image of the man that you want. But you fail to realize that your Frankenstein is a monster which only exists in your imagination. This is why you never allow anyone but your husband to enter that gate. So, let me close. Remember, it's your responsibility to take care of your spirit. It's your responsibility to take care of your body. If that means you have to cut some people out or get some things out of your life, then you need to do it. This is a battle for your sanity. This is a battle for your peace. Once you start controlling what you allow into your gateway or your gateways, you will start noticing improvements in your physical body as well as your emotional health. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I have for now. Until next time we meet, remember, do as much good as you can while you can. And this is Dr. Usher saying God bless and goodbye. Peace. I'm out.